Hi, everyone, and welcome to Pro Tools Answers. It's been a while, but don't worry, we're back with a great show because today we're talking about the brand new spanking Pro Tools 2024.6 update. It's quite the update. There's quite a large range of features and enhancements and improvements. So there's definitely something for everyone, whether you're doing post-production or music production or making questionable YouTube videos like this one. <laughs> uh, there's definitely too much stuff to talk about in a single video. So we're basically gonna focus on you know, the most substantial updates, the stuff that we like the best, and maybe the stuff that you might find useful for your own workflows. And to help me, as always, I am joined by Anders and Andy. Guys, what's new? How are you? Hey, doing good. How doing are you? Doing good. How are you doing? Very good, very good. It's it's hot here in Japan. It's it's June. It's getting sweaty and sticky. Yeah, the same here in Austria. Uh, extremely hot weather right now, so enjoying it. Nice, nice. Um, it's not great for recording because you, it's nice to record in a quiet room, in a cool room, and that's not really possible now. No, it's raining. I don't know if you're hearing it, but it's raining a lot over here. I think the, hu oh, wow. I think the humidity is 120% at the moment. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not comfortable. Now, if, if, if we could make a silent air conditioner, I'd buy that definitely. Now, um, let's talk about... Uh, today's updates 2024.6 again like there's a wide range of stuff here but again we're just going to focus on the main stuff the stuff that we're really interested in um anders what do you reckon uh what what was the main feature that caught your eye uh well i think the ara plugins that now came out like uh, they're giving us as rx spectral editor for free or for every paying Pro Tools customer. That means not for Pro Tools Intro, but all of the other versions are getting that for free. And I th think that's great. There are a couple of other ones as well that you get, or one more that you get for free, and a couple of ones that you get trials to and have support. Let's talk about the uh, RX Spectral Editor. Uh, it's a great little thing that we can use to repair audio. There are a couple of ways to enable the RX Spectral Editor on a track. One way to do it is to right click on a clip, go down to RX Spectral Editor and select Edit. The other way to do this is to enable the RX Spectral Editor down in the selector where you can find Elastic Audio Plugins and Melodyne. And the third way to do this is to select the track first and then go to the tracks menu item and go down to RX Spectral Editor and select Edit. This will open up the Spectral Editor in the docked view. As you can see, it's right here. If you want to have this as a floating window, you can press this little button at the bottom. It will detach it from the docked view and you can put it on a secondary monitor if you've got one, make that full screen to attach it again up in the right corner there is the button to do so and by the way if you've got rx installed in your system already you can access that through audio suite remember that this is not the same thing as the ara plugin they are two separate versions of the same plugins in the middle here, we can see that we have a little bit of a noise that I want to edit out and I'll just play it for you. And that's exactly what we will focus on here. And there are a couple of ways to do this. And um, I'll just select the lasso tool and lasso this in. I'll use the attenuate function right now, which basically looks at the audio before and after the selection and attenuates accordingly. So trying to like mimic the looks of that. So if I press the process button, and as you can see, uh, something happened there, but we didn't really hit the mark on this one. So I want to undo this. And here's something that you need to be aware of. If you hit your Command Z button or edit undo, it will undo the last Pro Tools operation that you did. But the RX Spectral Editor actually has its own undo history. And the correct button that you want to hit in this case is this button directly in Spectral Editor. So let me show you this. This will undo your last operation. 
I'll redo this again just to show you what happens if you go edit, undo. And you can see that it actually undid my last Protos operation, which was opening our Spectral editor. So be aware of that. I'll open up this again so that you can see the Spectral editor. Let me select this again here. And this time I'll add a little bit more strength to it and hit the process button again. And you can see that probably made it a little bit better this time. Still, there is no visual representation of this in the edit window. And that is because this is a real time process. And if you want to render this in to be able to view it also, there are a couple of ways to do this. Right click on the clip, go down to our spectral editor and hit the render button, which will render this particular clip only, of course, or the selected clips. Or if you remove the RX spectral editor as a plugin, it will ask you if you want to render and commit these into every clip that has been treated. How can you tell which clips have been treated with RX? Oh, that's a good one, Andy. There is a little icon up in the top right corner of a clip that has been treated with RX. So let's render this. Hit the render button, and now we can see the visual representation of that. Any questions? I've got one, Anders. It just occurred to me. You can click that little button and get the spectral editor to be a floating window. Yeah. And I don't know the answer to this question. I'm wondering if you do. So make that a floating window. Mm -hmm. Will it be shown and hidden with the normal show and hide? Oh, brilliant. So control option command and W is the shortcut for showing and hiding all floating windows of which this is now one. That's brilliant. It's going to help so many people. That's a great trick. That's really good. So another really cool plugin that we've just been playing around with is Repitch. I've only just installed it, so I haven't really had that much time to play around with it, but essentially it allows you to tune vocals easily and very quickly. I did actually want to talk about a bug that a lot of people have been experiencing, and that's when they open the plugin for the first time, it asks for a serial number. You put the serial number in and it doesn't work. Um, I think this is just a initial bug that Avid is working through. I'm sure this will be implemented a lot better soon. But if you're scratching your head and trying to work out how the hell to install this damn plugin, let me show you. I spent an hour trying to work this out, but I finally got it. First of all, go into your view my products. You want to go to your version of Pro Tools. I have Ultimate, but this works for Studio as well. View software download links and scroll all the way down to, that's it, pitch control and install it just like any other plugin. Then once you've done that to get the serial number, go all the way down to the bottom and you should have Synchro Arts here. So I'm going to open that. And this is the serial number down here that you'll use to activate the plugin for the first time. So I'm gonna copy that, gonna go back into Pro Tools, and let's just imagine I've opened this for the first time. I open this and it's gonna ask you for a serial number. That serial number that I just got from my Avid account, I pasted it in and it gave me an error. This is when I started pulling my hair out. There's a little pop-up message that says, need help. If you click on that, you'll be taken to a website which shows you how to do this. First of all, make sure you've copied the serial number that you got from your Avid account. Go to redeem.synchroarts.com and you sign up for a new account. When you log in, it will ask you to paste in that serial number you got from your Avid account. It will then give you a new serial number. And what you do is you click the there's a little button that says show code, click that, copy it, and then you paste it into the plugin with the prompt that asks you for the serial number. So essentially what's happening is for some people, not everyone, the serial number you get from your Avid account is old. You go into Synchro Arts, make a new account, it gives you an updated code and that will allow you to activate the plugin. It's a bit of a convoluted process. I'm sure this will be improved in the future. It took me an hour to work that out, but that's how you do it. 
and it's definitely a great plugin. You can instantiate it as a plugin, but because this is ARA, what you can do, as Anders just showed us with the spectral editor, is you right click, go down to repitch elements and click on edit. And essentially this user interface allows you to shift in time or shift in pitch. It's really, really great. And uh, I think maybe in the future we might do a more in-depth video on this, but definitely check it out. Anyway, that's how to access the plugin. That's great, man. That's so cool. And yep. thank you from everybody on the planet <laughs> for that, <laughs> for that work around to the problem. Yeah, that helped me. <laughs> I, I, I would say like with plugins, with Avid, there tends to be a pattern. There are the plugins that are native to Pro Tools, like AAX. There are new plugins that are offered as trials. And sometimes those new trial plugins don't have a very easy um, installation process. So guys, ARA, huge, huge, huge advantage. It's gonna be a major, major change to Pro Tools. There's gonna be a lot of exploration of it, uh, but that's not the only thing that's in this new version of Pro Tools. And each one of us have our own little favorite, minor features, but major impact. Anders, what's yours? It's a feature that has been in Pro Tools for a while, and that is restore previously shown tracks. So if I, for instance, select only to show instrument tracks, and now restore previously shown tracks, now you can set a shortcut for that in your keyboard shortcuts which I've done and I love that feature because I can quickly get back to the previously tracks that I showed. How many times have you uh, gone in, you know there's a preference for something, but you don't know where it is, you don't know what tab it's in, so you spend a whole bunch of time trying to find where that preference is. Well, those days are over because now the preferences window has a search bar at the top. So if I wanted to go to color coding, you can see here, anything with color coding is now automatically attention. Let's go to THRU. Great. And now it goes to the MIDI tab, and then it goes to the default through THRU instrument. Super easy. So it will give you a lot more time back in your day that you would have spent going through the preferences window. This is a really great little feature. Uh, we have some notes here that I have composed and if I just open up the MIDI editor you'll notice that the actual note names are now written on the notes which is really great for composition and also if I open up the little floating keyboard right here shift K and I play the notes it shows the note names too that's such a good enhancement I'm going to be using that a lot this is great man what a what a massive uh version yeah, and there is so much left to talk about. Uh, so look out for future videos on, on new features. So that's it for this week. Again, like we said, there's a whole bunch of other features that we haven't talked about. Maybe we'll do some videos about them in the future, but there's a lot to get through. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. We'll be back soon with new videos. Do check out our website, which is protoolsanswers.com. And there's lots of information about who we are and what we do. So do check that out and we shall see you soon. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>